What's up everyone, this is Richard of Backcountry Life and today I'm gonna to share my story of why I quit snowboarding. I've been snowboarding since I was little. I don't even know how old I was when I started snowboarding. People ask me and I, I don't remember. It's been a long time. I grew up up in the mountains and so we could snowboard in my backyard and I spent most of my winters, I'd even wake up bright and early before school started, go out and get a couple runs in, especially if it was nice new snow. And I loved it, I loved snowboarding. However, there was a point where I quit snowboarding. And it wasn't a conscious decision where I chose, today I'm gonna quit. It was a gradual thing where I found myself in a situation where I just wasn't going anymore. I wasn't doing what I loved. And I'm sure this story might sound familiar to lots of you because I would guess that a lot of you find yourself in the same situation. And a lot of my friends that I talk to are like, oh, you ever get out and go snowboarding anymore? And most often they say, no, nah, I just, you know, I should get busy. So my story is I got married, first problem, right? Just kidding, no, marriage has been great. But I got married and I had a baby, a little girl, and I felt a lot of responsibility. We were super poor back then, didn't have any money. And so for me to go out and go snowboarding, especially at a resort, was too much, I couldn't afford it. And then I've always felt guilty when I would go out on a Saturday and take all Saturday to go snowboarding when I had other responsibilities to be doing at home. And I didn't, and it was just a gradual thing where eventually I just stopped snowboarding. I just was snowboarding less and less and less. And I found myself not doing anything that I truly loved. I was just caught up in the responsibility of life. And I realized that that was not healthy for me. I was not in a good place. I needed something. I needed my own space. I needed to get out and do something that I loved, that I was passionate about. And that was snowboarding. And so I actually made a commitment to myself that I need to go snowboarding more. And it's interesting because it was hard. You think I'd get out first day and be like, oh, this is so amazing, and just fall in love with snowboarding again. But it was actually kind of hard. I had to, I would go out, go snowboarding, and I quickly realized, wow, I can't do anything that I used to be able to do. I am out of shape. <laughs> and so it took me a little while to get back into shape. And so it was almost frustrating because my skill level had decreased so much just because I was so out of shape from with snowboarding. And then a lot of times I'll go out and have a have a day that the snow wasn't that great and it just wasn't that great. And it's hard to be able to say, ah, oh, I'm gonna go next time. So unless you're committed, and I had a goal, I'm going to get back into snowboarding. And I, I made it a goal to do that. So I kept going, even though sometimes I didn't have great days. However, as I continued to do it, I started having those epic days that I remember where it's just everything makes sense. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm standing up at the top of the, the hill, looking down and my legs are shaking. I'm excited and about to drop into this sweet line. And that feeling came back and it's such a cool feeling. So not only did I slowly get back into snowboarding, but I also wanted to live out my childhood dream of going heliboarding. And so it was actually my wife that pushed me to do it. So we'd always want to do Sam and I, we'd always talked about heliboarding and doing that. But for some reason, it always just remained a dream. We never thought that it would really come to fruition. And my wife was like, you guys always talk about this. Why don't you go do it? And I was like, I don't know. It's just, it just doesn't make sense. It's too much money. That's a big commitment. And, and so I was actually saying, nah, I, it would be so amazing, but it just doesn't make sense. So my wife actually went and booked our first heliboarding trip. She got it all set up and said, you should go, you're going to go here. And it took her to push me in that direction to be able to feel okay with it myself. And once I went, I was, it, it was truly one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. It was so fun. And that's why 
I made a goal that I do, not only do I keep snowboarding, but I do one big trip, whether it's heliboarding or cat skiing per year at least. And for me, that's what keeps me going. Like that brings a lot of satisfaction into my life. It makes it so when I'm going out and snowboarding on some of the days that aren't so great, it's like I have a purpose because I got to get in shape for my heliboarding trip and I got to get back to tip top, you know, my skill level. And so it gives me more purpose to get out and go. So it does more than just an epic trip. And so I want you guys to think where in your life did you give up on one of your dreams or one of your passions? And that is what we want to do at Backcountry Life. We want to get you back out into the backcountry, back out doing something you love. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's wood carving, uh, golfing, dirt biking, but get back into that and go out and do it. Because it is fulfilling. It's not always easy and it won't always be convenient and make sense. But as you do it and stay consistent to that and set goals with it, which is, sounds so stupid when I say that, but it truly is fulfilling. And you will feel happier, more productive. And I feel like it'll help every aspect of your life. So get out into the backcountry. Don't do what I did when I quit, do what we're doing now, getting out into the backcountry and doing something. I don't care what it is. Thanks for watching. And if you guys haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe to follow along our adventures. And once again, we hope we can inspire you to get out and enjoy the backcountry, enjoy your passions, do something amazing.